The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. In the last lecture, we discussed sinusoidal and real and complex exponential signals, both for continuous time and discrete time. And those signals will form very important building blocks when we return to a discussion of Fourier analysis in a later lecture. In today's lecture, I'd like to introduce some additional basic signals, specifically the unit step and unit impulse signal. Let's begin with discrete time and the discrete time unit step and unit impulse. The discrete time unit step is a sequence as I've indicated here, specifically a sequence which is zero for negative values of its argument and equal to 1 for positive values of its argument and 0. So mathematically, the unit step sequence is 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for n less than 0. The unit impulse sequence, likewise, is defined in a straightforward way. The unit impulse sequence is a sequence which is 0 for all values of its argument except for n equals 0. So the unit step and unit impulse sequence are defined in a straightforward way mathematically. And in fact, they are also related to each other in a straightforward way mathematically. Specifically, the unit impulse can be related to the unit step through the relationship that I've indicated here, delta of n, the unit impulse, equal to a unit step minus the unit step delayed. So mathematically, the relationship is what is referred to as a first difference. And to see the validity of this expression, we can simply look at the unit step and its delayed version. So here we show the unit step, u of n. Here we show the unit step delayed by 1. So it's 0 for n less than or equal to 0. And clearly, if we subtract the delayed step from the original unit step, Everything subtracts out except at n equals 0, in which, at which point the difference is equal to 1. And so the difference between u of n and u of n minus 1 is simply the unit impulse, sometimes incidentally also referred to as the unit sample. Now, in a similar way, we can express the unit step in terms of the unit impulse, and there are several ways of doing this. One way is through a relationship referred to as a running sum. What I mean by that is the following expression. If we think of forming the sum from minus infinity up to some value n of a unit impulse or unit sample, then this running sum, in fact, is equal to the unit step. And we can see that in a fairly straightforward way by simply observing that in this expression, 
when n is less than 0, there's nothing accumulated in the sum. And we can see that graphically, as I've shown here. So for n less than 0, we accumulate no terms in the sum. Whereas for n greater than 0, we accumulate one non-zero value in the sum, namely the value of the unit sample at n equals 0. So we have then one expression for the relationship between the unit step and the unit sample. We can also develop another relationship by observing, in essence, that if we look at the unit step sequence, as I've returned to here, we can, in effect, think of the unit step sequence as a succession of unit impulses, one following another. So if we consider forming a sum of delayed impulses, as I indicate mathematically here, and as I indicate graphically down below, we have an impulse here at n equals 0, and an impulse here at n equals 1, an impulse here at n equals 2, etc. And when we continue to add these up, then what they add up to is the unit step sequence. And so mathematically, then, that would correspond to an impulse at n equals 0, plus an impulse at n equals 1, plus an impulse at n equals 2, et cetera. Now, in, dis in continuous time, we have a very more or less similar situation. We will find it equally useful to talk about a unit step continuous time signal and a unit impulse continuous time signal. Let's begin with the continuous time unit step. The continuous time unit step function is graphically indicated, as I've shown here. It's a time function which is 0 for t less than 0, and it's 1 for t greater than 0. And so mathematically, what it corresponds to is u of t defined as a time function, which is 0 for t less than 0, 1 for t greater than 0. Now, an obvious question is, what happens at t equals 0? And the difficulty here, which is not a difficulty that arises in the discrete time case, is that at t equals 0, the unit step function is, in fact, discontinuous, which generates a variety of mathematical problems. And one can define the unit step at t equals 0 in a variety of ways. But the essential point is that the unit step function is discontinuous. So in effect, what we need to do is think of the unit step function as the limit of a continuous function. And so we can define a function, which I specify here as u sub delta of t. And u sub delta of t is a time function which is 0 for t less than 0, linearly increases to time delta, which would correspond to this breakpoint, and then 1 following that. And so we can think then of the discontinuous unit step as the limiting form of u sub delta of t as delta goes to 0. Now, we also want to define a unit impulse function. And it had a fairly straightforward definition in discrete time. In continuous time, things get slightly more difficult. And to motivate the definition, 